Hello Spark fans and welcome back to Advancing Spark where today we have the exciting topic of user management and identity provisioning. No? Not excited? I mean I'm excited. So one of the reasons why when kicking off all the Unity catalog stuff I started out with just showing you this is what it looks like when it's already installed is because in order to get to that point you need to have something set up that's going to sync your users and AD groups through to the Azure account console. You need to actually have some kind of user federation management stuff already set up. How do we do that? Well, we do it by digging the documentation and just having a quick skim around. Skim around the system for cross-domain identity management. What we're talking about today, the Skim API. The SCIM is how we do this stuff. It is something that we can set up on an Azure Active Directory. We can provision this kind of enterprise application. We can say, here's a load of users and groups. Go and sync it with that workspace and it will automatically manage the syncing up of those two things together which is fantastic and makes our lives so much easier i've had to do this in the past by wrapping a load of python around the um user management api in databricks and then syncing it from lists of json and groups and ah doing it manually it's really annoying so being able to say hey look i want to provision something at the ad level to push users and groups over into the databricks workspace is super super useful anyway and you're going to need it if you're going to set up Unity Catalog in the future. So, what we're doing today, we're talking identity management, baby. It's where we're at. So, as always, if you're new around here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what you're currently doing for identity management or using the Scheme API. Where are you at with all this stuff? Always love to hear what you guys are up for. And until then, let's talk Skim. Here we go. Provision users and groups using SCIM. A few things that you need to know. Number one, your Databricks account got to be premium. Only works for premium, like most of the security elements inside Databricks that is on the premium plan only. You must be a Databricks administrator in order to set this up and actually be able to add users to Databricks. In order to do the admin stuff for Databricks, you have to be an admin. I mean, that just makes sense. Uh, and you have, can have a maximum of 10,000 users and 5,000 groups in a workspace. I mean, I think that's fair. That's, that's an all right limit of how many users uh, if you've got more users than that for a single Databricks workspace, you should probably break it up a little. Do it a bit differently, maybe. Cool. So that is what we're going to do. So we dig further, deeper into the thing. I mean, one, note that this is in public preview. So take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, two, we do need to be an Active Directory admin. We do need to have permissions to go and actually play around with this. It says you must be a global administrator for the Azure Active Directory. And I get that the majority of people won't be the global admin for their Azure Active Directory. So you might have to pass this video on to your Azure admins, hi guys, and then they can actually go and set this up for you. You might have to work with them. Maybe you are managing all the tenants in yourself and you can go and do this stuff. I don't know. That's what you need in order to follow this stuff through. And then there's a big old list of instructions about how you go and do this stuff. Again, read it through, follow the instructions. If you're doing a setup for Unity Catalog, this is part of it. You're going to have to go and do that at some point anyway. For now, I'm just going to show you how you do. I'm going to show you how the different moving bits and pieces are. And then you can read through the docs and hopefully it'll all make sense together. Plan. So, I am in my Azure subscription. I was just in Azure Active Directory. So, if you're not used to uh, being in AAD, there you go. That's what it looks like. You can go into Azure Active Directory, load of stuff in here. And we're doing enterprise applications. Button down. Oops, button down here. Enterprise applications is where we need to be. Enterprise applications, they're like a fancy service account. Oh, that toggled off. Blurring. You can't see all my IDs. Oh. Essentially, a service principle is essentially a service account when we're in Azure. An enterprise application is a service principle that's doing some extra stuff. Maybe it's a custom version. Maybe you can do things like, I don't know, sync users and groups between two places. It runs as a service account but it has some extra bits of functionality. So in this case, we're going to do a new one. I don't have anyone in there that is going to do any Databricks syncing for me, so I need to add a new application. And this is a whole gallery of what kind of enterprise app do you want? In this case, I want a Databricks one, and I get the Azure Databricks Skim Provisioning Connector. Let's click on that. It needs a name. So this is the name of the account it's going to run as. It's going to create this as a service printable. This is a, a robot person. That's being created inside my Azure AD. So I could call it the Azure Databricks Skim Provisioning Connector. That's a fancy name. Like Manager, Mr. Skim, whatever. Call it whatever you want. 
maybe align them to the different workspaces you're going to hook it up to, uh, and then, yeah, go from there. That's going to take a little minute. So that's going to go and create a service printable for me. It's going to go and set that stuff up. It's going to get it ready that I can actually go and use it. And that's nice and quick. Um, and it's going to need some things before I can use it. Uh, like most service printable things, it'll have a name, an app ID, an object ID. If you're working in Azure and you need to give some kind of delegated access to a service account, then use the service principle and then you need the app ID. We can generate secrets, all of those things against it. So, things we need to do. Oh, we can do stuff. First thing we need to do is set up some kind of provisioning. We need to say, well, actually, how is it going to, how is it going to sync with Databricks? How does it know to go from this thing into Databricks? We've got this provisioning button. We're going to provisioning. And it says, right, how do you want to provision? Oh, I've got no access. Okay, it's still setting it up. We'll come back to there in a second. We'll come back. We've now got, we should have our person in this list. Uh, got provisioning. It might be ready yet. No, it's not ready. Okay, we'll come back in a minute and that should be ready to go. And then we can step through how that actually works. While that's taking a moment just to get itself set up, I'll hop over onto Databricks. So this is the workspace I want to give people access to. I want to set this up. So my little skin provisioner, I can give it an Azure group, I can give it a user, and then I can hit go, and it'll pass that over into this Databricks workspace. In order to do that, it needs a bit of info. Everything in there. So I'm going to need to go to generate a token. I can generate a new token. This could be my skim token. How long should it live? A day, because I don't want everyone to pause this video and steal my key, because I know you will. Uh, and then we're going to do that. There we go. Done. Going to pop that into notepad the right place to keep all kind of sensitive information uh, and then we can come back to it so i've generated a key that i can come back to and i can tell hey skim this is the key you can use to talk to databricks i'm also going to need this i'm going to need the url for my databricks account i think you can see at the top hbs adb dash blah 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 your databricks.net i'm going to grab that and then the two things that I mean, anytime you're trying to connect to Databricks, if you have that URL and you've got a token that has the relevant access, that is how you connect. They're the two pieces of information that you need to connect to a Databricks workspace. That's why I'm worried. I'm sharing it. You might see it. You might connect as me. <gasps> and then we can go and set that up. So hopefully now this has had enough time to settle down. Provisioning should work. Thanks. I've got some credit remaining. If I get provisioning, there we go. It's now happy. So we need to get started setting up provisioning for this enterprise application. Let's get started. All right, how do you want to provision stuff? Do you want to do it manually? Or would you like the provisioning of your user accounts to be man to automatic? I would like it to be automatic, please. Please do this for me. That's why I've created you. Huh. It says, what's your tenant URL and what's your secret token? So these are the two pieces that we need to tie together to build out the right location for that. So first things first, I'm going to pop the URL in. And actually, we need a little bit more than just the URL. I have to go back to the docs and grab that. So we drill down a little bit. I was talking about creating that. There we go. So we've got that slash API 2.0 preview SEIM. So that URL I had for my Databricks workspace, I actually need to pop this on the end of it. I'm go back to there. So pop that in. There we go. Just bringing those two things together. I've just copied and pasted the URL out of my uh, workspace directly. Saying slash API 2.0 preview SCIM. And they're going to put that secret token in. All right, this is the token. This is the secret. This is how you connect. And I can test that connection. Uh, that doesn't work. So is that because I was foolish and included the organization? I think it might be. Do that again. Yeah, it's all right. Silly me. Sorry. So if we take that. You don't need the O equals part of your workspace. It is just that part. It's just the actual location of it. And then you pop slash API 2.0 preview SCIM onto the end of it. And they're the two bits of information it needs to tie together. So that test, that tested positive. We've tested again. There we go. Tick. I have the right credentials in order for this SCIM to connect to Databricks. That's it. That's all it needs to do. So now that's provisioning set up. You can now see what these other buttons, that provisioning blade has now changed. Go in there and it says, right, how percent complete am I? What's been provisioned so far? It's not been done yet. I can start provisioning, I can stop it, I can do a manual on-demand provision uh, and it can play around with that stuff. But at the moment, there's no one to provision. It doesn't know who should be added into that account. And we do that, we've got rules, uh, users and groups over here. 
So now that I've, I've set up the thing that can take a user and group and push it to Databricks, I need to go and give it a user and group. So I'm going to go and come in and add. So I'll just give me. Go. It will give that guy, Simon, make, give him access, assign him in here. You can see we've got this. Now we can see there is a person in here and have a play around with it. I want to add that person into my Databricks account. If I go back to my provisioning, I can hit start provisioning and that'll kick off the process. Hit go, scheduled to start. It's going to take a little while. And now that runs, I think it's every 40 minutes or so. It's going to kick off. The provisioning interval is fixed. Every 40 minutes, it's going to run a sync. And if there's any new users or any new groups inside there, it's just going to push it through. That'd be nice. That'd be good. Should work. And then we should see in a minute if I hit refresh, should be starting that provisioning. And you know, because I'm lazy, we can say, no, stop that. I don't want you to do your, your automated thing. I want to provision on demand. And then here we say, well, actually, I want it to be me. Go and make sure it's pushing me through. To do. I mean, that's a weird one for it to be, but okay. And we can say, right, I want to go and push that user through. It's like, oh, it's a redundant export. In this case, that person's already a member of the Databricks workspace. Why are you trying to push it again? But even so, that's how it works. So you can see there, we can kick it off manually and say, I just made some changes. Just sync these changes with your Databricks workspace. Or we can just have it always running in this start provisioning. And it feels like, why would I want it start provisioning if I've just got a list of users and groups? But if someone changes that Active Directory group, then that user needs to be automatically added into Databricks and then added to that Databricks group. That's the key thing to really notice here is that when we're talking about groups, it's an Active Directory group in our AD side, but it's a Databricks group when we're actually in the workspace. So this isn't just copying the objects there and there uh, back and forth. It's actually managing that Databricks group and adding users to it and managing who's actually a part of it and creating that Databricks group if it doesn't exist. So we need to manage both of those sides of things. And we do that entirely through here. This also means that then you can do things like a support request. I can say, well, actually, my whole provisioning process, ring up the service desk, ask to be added to a certain Active Directory group. They'll go through the approval process and do it exactly the same as they would through any other Active Directory management. And then this will run every 40 minutes and just sync that user across. We don't have to teach support teams to go inside Databricks, to go into user management, to set up users, and then to go there. And so we have to have to go into many, many different places. We can just all do it through an Active Directory group, which makes so much more sense. And that's it. That is the entirety of setting up the SCIM integration. And that's, that's easy. Yes, you need admin access to both Active Directory and Databricks. Or at least the admin of Databricks needs to give you the credentials so you can hit a button and do that syncing. It's, it does need a bit of setup and it is still in preview. You can see occasionally if you're too eager and you hit go when it hasn't quite started yet, it, it goes, eh, what? Well, you don't have access. But as a process, it works. And it's a hell of a lot easier than writing a ton of Python and manually creating some kind of AD sync federation thing. I can tell you that out of sheer experience and pain and suffering. Um, so yeah, generally, if you're wanting to sync up users, look at the SEIM uh, provisioning. Super, super useful. Really, really good at doing that. And you're going to have to do it if you're going to start working with Unity Catalog and the Azure Account Console for that. Cool. Yeah, that's that's it. That's all, all I wanted to ramble on about in terms of user management and identity provisioning. I'm going to go and delete all of that stuff now before you all just automatically log in as me. And I might do that before I release the video. That would make a lot of sense. Yeah. Cool. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And yeah, let us know what other videos you'd like to see, if you're going to be around for the Data AI Summit. And yeah, catch you next time. Cheers.